all of eight years of building this car. This is the final stage of 2024, and we are gonna take a look at everything that I've done to the car. Almost every year I've owned this car, I've done a mod list, but this year I'm gonna make it a little bit more special. I always get questions on where I got things. So I'll have the full mod list in the description, but I'll also have a link beside each mod to the video that I've made to each of these mods. So for example, maybe the custom headlights. I'll have a video beside the custom headlights in the description. You can click and watch, check out what I have there or whatnot. About the car, this is a 2007 Mazda 3 GS. That means it's the mid trim in Canada term. It's also had a touring package, which included the sunroof and a couple other things on the car. I don't really know. <laughs> I just know the sunroof was added to this trim with a package. I have owned this car for a total of eight years. This car is currently sitting at about almost 260,000 kilometers and you wouldn't even be able to tell. We're gonna start on the outside of the car, we're gonna look in the engine bay, and then we're gonna go to the inside of the car and see everything that I've done to this car. Get some inspo for your own build. Not a lot on the front of the car has changed from last year. As you can see here, we have the custom headlights with the M4 halos, an LED sequential turn signal, LED high beams, LED headlights. Moving on here, we have the Duraflex open mouth grill, paint matched to the car's paint code. Down here, we have a GV style front lip. This was really hard to get in Canada. I have to import it from this. I have to go to the States to get this baby because you can't get these in Canada. This is paint matched to the car. This car itself actually has the GT bumper, which was the highest trim level. This car came with a different front bumper, but this one has such a nicer design to it. So this is swapped with a GT bumper. Along here, this is vinyl wrapped glossy black. This plastic piece is normally like a matte plastic black. So we just put some vinyl wrap on it to make it look a little bit better. Hidden under here, you can see there are some hello horns. Those are painted purple to go with the older color scheme that was on this car. Down here as well, you can see that we have LED fog lights and those are pretty much all the lighting upgrades that we have on the front of the car, which gives it this beautiful, beautiful look. There's a few things on the side of the car that we could talk about, like these LED sequential turn signals. These are such a cool upgrade and they're so cheap. I definitely recommend doing a set yourself. Now let's go ahead and talk about the wheel setup, which is one of the most important things about this build and what makes it look like this. These are a set of Work Varianza D3S. It's a two-piece wheel. I imported these straight from Japan. These are an 18 by an eight with a 25 offset. These line up quite nicely with the fenders. I'd say this is actually a really safe size. Um, I'm able to tuck these with very minimal uh, camber, especially on the back. This tire size is a 215, 35, 18, a little bit thinner just to get it to fit and sit a little bit lower than what it normally would on like a 225, 40, 18, which was on this car before. And behind the wheel here, we have black painted calipers all the way around on four corners. And I'll talk about the suspension once I've done going around all the cosmetic features on the exterior of the car. Now I actually removed a couple things on this car this year that you might not have noticed. Like we had vent visors. Those have now made a disappearance that was just to go with the show car look instead of the daily driver sort of thing I had going on here. Now another thing that wasn't on this car that I actually added on was these GT side skirts that go very very well with the GT front bumper. With the GT front bumper and the GT side skirts on the mid trim this almost pretty much makes it a GT model. I mean, that's besides, you know, the interior features that you might get with the GT model or like some of the rear features that you might get with the GT model, but technically an exterior GT model. It looks like GT. Now here we are at the back of the car. There's a few things again that's going on here. We have some LED license plate lights, it's a little bright out to show those. These are a cool little mod and I actually really like LED license plate lights. The trunk has been debadged. There are holes here. I just never bothered putting badges back in after I unwrap the car. I have an LED third brake light with a clear lens. This was from the tinted LED third brake light and I took the clear lens from the OEM brake light and pretty much morphed them together. This is a really, really cool DIY mod. Come along here, we actually have the GT taillights from the GT trim as well. So this really completes that GT exterior uh, look for this car. These are an LED brake light. Inside here, we have, we have white LED reverse 
lights and we also have white LED turn signal lights. Coming down here, we have the clear bumper lens. Now these actually light up, I don't have them hooked up. So these are just clear reflector lenses for the rear bumper. And then if we look on the side here, I also have the clear reflector lens for the side of the bumper. Again, these light up as well. I just don't have them hooked up. These are just for display purposes. And if I come up to the top of the car here, you can see I have a carbon fiber stubby antenna. This used to be all black, but it's been faded so much in the sun over the years. It kind of turned into a bit of a gold look. One of my favorite exterior mods that I did is this scaled supply merchandise on the car. If you guys want a little bit yourself or another way to support the channel, check out that link in the top right. Now the coilovers to get this car this low are the Scale Coilovers Extreme Low Kit. These have a 20K front spring rate and an 18K rear spring rate. The fronts also have adjustable end link kits from that scale kit itself. It comes with adjustable front end links, which is really nice. This thing rides super, super stiff, but I'm also able to go a lot lower than actually what I am right now, but I'm really happy with this ride height. This is the lowest this car has ever been thanks to the scale kit. Now there's a few things going on in the back of the car for suspension as well. In the back here, we have SBC rear camera arms, which allow me to tilt and fit in my rear wheels. One of my favorite mods for this car as well on the back of this is the 33 millimeter custom rear sway bar that I had done few, a few years ago. If I had any recommendations on any mods to do to your Mazda 3, one of the first ones would be a rear sway bar. It changes how the car feels. It's so good and I would take it along with any car that I buy here on out. Rear sway bar, 100% such a game changer. Now that we've finished with cosmetic and suspension things, let's go ahead and look at the performance of this car under the engine bay. Now it is a little tough to see under here, but we have a Mazda Speed OEM accessory, really rare <laughs> cold air intake. This is powder coated purple, and one of my favorite things inside this car. I used to have a throttle body ground. I do recommend doing those. I don't have it in this car anymore. We'll pretend that it's here, and I recommend to do that. The only other two things that you're gonna see in this car there's a Cork Sport rear motor mount that keeps the engine nice and stiff. I had to recommend something to keep, you know, your shifting at bay. It's just do a nice little rear motor mount on these cars. They don't make a lot of torque, but I think something like that is just really nice to have. And you also get to really feel your car. One of the most expensive things in here and probably the most power enhancing thing is I actually have an Exedi lightweight flywheel that I did when I did the clutch. That was an expensive piece. I honestly don't really feel a difference. Um, it's not really harder to drive either. It's just kind of been there for me, but I think the acceleration honestly has been quite enhancing compared to uh, my beater, which I compare these two cars against each other. And this thing does accelerate a lot faster than that car does. The Cork Sport Catback exhaust make good noise. And that's all for performance because Mazda. Now, before I go on to show you the interior things, there is one more go fast mod. I do have a Manzo short shifter in here with the shifter bushings that keeps, again, the shifting at bay. Feels a little bit nicer to use. Now there's a lot to look at in here. We're gonna start with this, obviously a painted decoration trim. We're looking at an Eonin double din stereo. This is something you can find a video in and also get a little discount on those if you check out that video. We have custom HVAC knobs. I had painted these black at some point, now they're turning bronze. Down at the bottom here, phase two motor trend floor mats. Literally the only aftermarket floor mats I've ever found for these cars. Checkered, I love the look of these in this car. Such a nice addition. If we look at our shift setup here, I just have a actually wish.com shift knob. We are likewise shift boot retainer with the dog tag and just a nice little floral shift boot. Some of my favorite additions in here are actually these seats. You can't really see them all over there. Mazda Speed 3 OEM front seats, way more comfortable than the regular Mazda 3 seats. The bolstering is incredible and they come in different colorways that are very suitable for, you know, whatever kind of color scheme you're going for. At my feet are Mazda Speed aluminum pedals, which give a nice touch to this interior. Notice little things like piano black painted rims. Now these are actually from a GT model. I would highly recommend doing this. You'll notice black painted AC vents along with black painted gauge bezels. More GT mods you'll notice up here is I have GT tweeters. These are OEM and added these into these cars. These actually helped quite a bit. And last but not least, inside the cabin, I have some Alpine type best speakers 
speakers inside the doors give this car a nice sound. Now an honorable mention I want to note is these door strike. Very fun little mod to do once you get your first car. Or just anything, any car. I'll probably do this on my next car to be honest. Now for this car's hidden party trick, I have one of the rarest things you could probably find for a Mazda 3 sedan, and that is this GT Spec rear trunk brace. The rarest piece in this car, hands down, and you cannot find these for shit. <laughs> and just hidden away in the trunk where no one can see it. And guys, with that being said, that's basically the mod list for my Mazda 3 in 2024. It has been so much fun making these videos every year, seeing the changes that have been made, and obviously just seeing all the new faces that get to see this car different every year that might have not seen it the other year. If you guys want to see how much it's changed over the years, I definitely recommend seeing the other mod list that I've made with this car. If you guys want to see the full playlist of every single mod I've done in this car, I'll leave that up in the top right for you guys to check out as well. That's the full Mazda 3 build playlist. One of my favorite playlists that I share with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and comment down below what you guys think about the Mazda 3's mod list. Thank you so much for supporting the channel over the years. It means so much to me and what this car has done for you know us and the community as a whole what it's been able to do for you guys and inspire you is just so awesome to see. And I hope we can continue doing that for more years to come. Other than that, guys, thank you so much. Keep it real. I'll see y'all in the next one.